Jesus and for that great, great worship. I mean, I love, I love that. I love worship, amen. And I want to thank you, uh, Pastor Darrell, for allowing me to to speak. And I want to just say what the Lord has placed on my heart, amen. amen. But let me introduce my wife also. She travels with me. My wife, Angela Wells, right here. This is my amen. wife. And she, amen. She's been with me. And we used to pastor for 10 years in Bryan. And I'm going to tell you, this Brazos Valley is a, it's a hard, hard, hard ground. Amen. Hard ground. I'm talking about from, from what, from Fort Worth to Houston to Beaumont. Even I mean, spiritual jacket. yes, but this, this is central Texas. This is central Texas. Now, I mean, it's hard in central Texas. So anybody that pastors, I mean, I'm, I have much. But look, God, I left, uh, stopped pastoring, and, and God opened a lot of doors. I travel. I want a lot of souls, and um, I I think that God allowed me to pass it because I just wanted to. But but uh, this is my calling is to, is to travel to win souls, and I love uh, just just winning winning souls, winning souls. So um, today we want to talk about a need for workers. Amen. Amen. Uh, and because even those that are not here today, we're gonna pray that. That they get back. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let us pray first. Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify your name. Your word, the Lord, to be praised. Yes, Father, I ask that you forgive us for all of our sins yes, and transgressions yes. and iniquity. Yes. Creating us a clean heart yes. and renew a right spirit within us. Yes, Father, let your kingdom come yes. and your will be done yes. on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Father, let that river that makes glad your city flow now yes. into this place. Yes. Yes. Let angels of sin and descend yes. on our behalf. Take yes. out and bring in yes. what we need. Give unto us the spirit of wisdom yes. and the revelation yes. and the knowledge of you. Yes. Have my eyes of understanding and being enlightening yes. that we may know the hope of your calling yes. and the risen glory and heaven of your saints. Yes. Father, we thank you now in the most wonderful, victorious, marvelous, yeah. magnificent name of Jesus. Let us say amen. 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 Again, a need for workers. And also I want to thank God. That's my first cousin. One of my sons in the ministry, Alvin Wells. I think you met him before, Pastor. Oh, Alvin. And, and James, also my brother-in-law. Yeah. Uh, but he's my son in the ministry, also. Oh, man. Also. And so, and, uh, also, y'all pray for Brother Rufus Marshall. He's a, a older guy that, that travels with him, but he's on hospice now. And uh, he's kind of got a little all, all the time. Me and my wife went over to his. He has traveled with us for years and years, and and um, he's very, very sick now. And uh, But he has. he's a great soul winner. He's done a lot of work for the Lord. But just keep him up and pray, pray for God's grace and mercy for him. Amen. Amen. I want you to refer. Let's, let's go to 2 Peter. Three and nine. We're going to. Second Peter. Three and nine. For everybody's edification. So I'm going to read from the King James. And, and if anybody got. You, uh, you have an English translator with. Because I have you to. Okay. Thank you. Second Peter. For everybody's edification. Chapter three. Verse nine. Amen. Let me know when you're there. Make sure you're there. Amen. Amen. Second Peter, chapter three, verse nine. And the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men call slackness, but is long suffering to us words. Now, this word, I want you to underline this: not willing. That any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Now, this is the attitude and the mindset we have to have when we go. When I go out every day, no matter where I go, I'm gonna pray in, in, in every house. I'm gonna I'm gonna witness to somebody. This is a lifestyle of me. Amen. But you gotta get a revelation that he's not willing. 
that any man, woman, boy, and girl shall perish, should be lost. Amen. Should be lost. You got to get that revelation. Amen. And if you and, and see, I, I deal with, with people who in different places. They say, well, uh, once a year we go out into the city. I said, no, oh, man, you. It's got to be a lifestyle. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's got to be a lifestyle. Yes. You have to get to a point where you understand that some of the people, see, look, we're in a, we, we are in a time right now of intellectual darkness. Amen. Amen. Where people are intellectually explaining foolishness Amen. in this world. Amen. And you got to know the truth. Yes, right. We got to buy the truth and sell it now. It's not our time to get politically correct and back up and, and become like the world. Right. You see, when I don't see a lot of people here, I know why. Because see, they eat, the Bible says in, in Jeremiah 2, mm -hmm. it said that my people yes. have committed two evils. Preach. They have forsaken me, Amen. the fountain of living water, and hewed themselves up, crack system, that can hold no water. Right. See, when, when people begin to drink from broken, muddy systems of the world, right. Right. Yes. the world's me to CNN and all this, and, and listen to that. Oh. And listen to that. Right. This is what caused people to follow the world more than God. That's right. That's right. You cannot drink from these systems. Right. You cannot let the world dictate what is right and what is wrong. The, 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 see, the kingdom is upside down to the world. We got to remember that. We got to remember that we're in a time of uh, redefining people. They redefining marriage, redefining history, everything. And we got Christians who are going along with it. Right, yes, going along with it. So when you preach like you preach, come on. Come on. <laughs> this is it. That's it. Because when people are drinking from this system all day and listening to this and, and they begin to become lukewarm. Amen. Amen. And I'm a little tired baby. Lukewarm. And that's what we're up against in this Brazos Valley. The spirit of, 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 of error right. is here. In this brother's valley. That's the spirit right. of Antichrist. That's, right. that's the spirit that's over and against the things of God. That's what it is. And it's pulling people away from the power of God. Yeah, that's right. This is the time that we're living in. That's right. That's right. And it's bad in our cities. Yes, it in this brother's valley. Yeah. People who love not and know not the truth. Right. Amen. Amen. I have been called a racist. Ain't that <laughs> A bigot. But I am what I am by the grace of God. That, see, that's why you got to wake up the Bible and say, say you got to put off the old man and put me on the Lord Jesus Christ. You got to die to yourself daily. Because if you're not dead, when they tell you that, guess what you're going to do? You're going to conform to their way. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. People so afraid they don't want to suffer. They don't want they don't want people to put mud on their name. But they they live God in this world. The Bible says gonna suffer persecution. What you running? What are you doing? That's right. That's right. You know, people have I say, don't ask me nothing if you don't want to know the truth now. Because I'm not gonna tell you. But we're in a time of intellectual darkness, man. People are, are intellectually trying to explain foolishness. But we got to remember now that there, these are lost souls yeah. Yeah. that are out here. Right. And they need Jesus. Yes, you hear me? Because they need Jesus. Yes, they need so let, let's, go, let's go to Matthew 9. Let, that's that's going to be our social take. Go to Matthew 9. And I'm going to get going here. And sometimes I, I say this, boy, and, and man, I, I, I've had a whole row of people just get up. <laughs> and leave <laughs> out the back. Just I mean, but it it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, hey. I, now when I was young, I've been preaching twenty five years now, going on twenty six years. You know, back in the day, that would shake me. See, now I'm up to hey, I'm an old soldier. That hey, that don't bother me not one bit. <laughs> you know, I don't. They I, they done said when I start preaching, they turn sideways on me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, anything to try to vex you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. But I commend you. Yeah. Amen. Take some power yeah. Yeah. That's right. to come here yeah. in this Brazos Valley. Yeah. Do you know how many preacher killers come on. that are in this Brazos Valley that they have run preach up to people because they have run, run them out? <laughs> wow. 
Yes. But see, if see, let, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna move on. See, in the Brads and Valley, see, me and my wife, we didn't have our uh, cub, we didn't have our church set up as a democracy. Right. It was a theocracy. <laughs> see, they didn't like that. They don't like. That. See, you gotta say, religion don't like theocracy. Yeah. They want to vote on everything. Right. Yeah, right. They want democracy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you see, did you see? Yeah. And the kingdom is not a democracy. Right. <laughs> but that's what they want. Amen. They want to be able to tell the man of God. Now we're going to pray and see what you need to do. We're going to get together and we're going to vote on what you need to do. You see, but when you see, but this is how it's set. But when you come and it's a theocracy, God and talk, tell you, you tell people, see, and now people say that we ain't used to that. We ain't used to that. You know, we used to the, to the deacons. Oh. Putting the pastor in line. See, that's what you up against in this Brazos Valley. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. But that's what you're up against. Yeah. Not just in Brian, I mean in Hearn. Yeah. Everywhere. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Everywhere. Yeah. That's right. Everywhere. Yeah. Now I'm born and raised. I ain't nothing but a hillbilly. Six foot four hillbilly. <laughs> I'm born and raised in Calvary, Texas. I never, they I I never get invited to preach to Calvary. <laughs> because of the system that they have. Yeah. The system that's set up. That's right. yeah. that's right. See, I don't fit their system. Yeah. That's okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I'm, just, I'm just trying to encourage you for a bit. Yeah. You see? Let, 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 let's, we, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for next time or something. Matthew 9, verse. Let's start with. Let me see. I'm Matthew 9. I'm going to pick up at. Let's pick up at 35. Matthew 9, verse 35. I'm going to go 35 to 38. Amen. Amen. And we're going to get going. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Put that down, see? Yeah. See, re religion is different from the kingdom, man. It's, it's different. Yeah. That's right. The kingdom is supernatural. Religion is straight natural. That's right. That's right. Natural people trying to talk about something spiritual. That's now you got that's gonna be a mess. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And and that's what that's what democracy see when you got people who live by democracy living in natural, so they take spiritual things and try to apply and use worldly stuff to try. That's why they do worldly things in the church. No power is there. Right. Amen. Amen. But 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 Jesus teaching in our synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and what healing yeah. every sickness and every disease among the people, yeah. among the people. Yeah. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. So you see, when when we when we leave out of these doors and and we we look at our communities and Amen. we look around and we should be moved. With compassion. Because they fainted. They were scattered abroad. As sheep. Having no shepherd. Amen. That's These right. people going to church every Sunday. Still ain't, ain't got no shepherd. That's right. That's right. That's right. And a sheep. I'm going to tell you something about a sheep. A sheep is pitiful. <laughs> if the wolf came in. The sheep would eat wrong. He man. Let him cut his, let him cut his throat. He man. Man. <laughs> the sheep could turn around and fall on his back and get and get bloated. He unathletic. He can't even turn over, or she can't even turn over to get it, to put get herself back right. <laughs> Can be eaten and wind up at the devil's place. <laughs> Dumb. Yes. And Jesus say we sheep. That's why we got so many children of our sheep in drugs and alcohol. That's right. Sheep without a shepherd have no shepherd. Bound. So they have no shepherd. Sheep have to be led, corralled, nourished, healed, all of that. And that's what God is creating. Ain't nothing but a sheep shed. That's all it is. That's all sheep shed. But, but we got so many blind sheep blinded by the world. 
Blinded by the media. Yeah, Blinded by food. They can't find a way. That's why you got to go out there and get them. Right. Some of them are bound and drugs that you got to cut them loose. That's right. That's right. There's a need for workers. Yeah. That's a need for workers. Yes, there is. Yes. Sheep caught up in everything. Yeah. That's right. You know, you know, a sheep, you say, they just say, I'm doing so bad. Oh, man, I'm doing bad. And I just feel so bad. See, that's a sheep. <laughs> that's a sheep. That's a sheep. Guess what? With no shepherd most of the time. They done went to in the wrong place, went to the wrong church, got hurt. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So now they don't want to deal with none of us. That's right. Preach your word. That's it. That's look, 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 look at look at uh, verse 37, 38. Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful. Yes. But the labors are few. I told you there's a need for workers now. Yes. Pray ye. The Lord of harvest Amen. that he will send forth labors into the harvest. Amen. That's right. The harvest is great, yes. but the workers are few. Amen. And I pray that the Lord who is in charge of the harvest yes. That's right. will send workers from this church yes. Yes. into the fields. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. Because there's a need for workers now. Yes. And those that are not here today, yes. we got to motivate them. Amen. Amen. Now we're dealing with six sheep now. Some of them need rides. You got to pick them up. You got to help them. So that means they're going to be time and sometimes you got to spend a little money on them now. Now we ain't just in the business of, 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 just, of just giving out money and all and giving out a lot of fish now. We give out fishing poles. Remember that now. Make you fishing with me. Amen. So we got to, we got to watch it now because sometimes they'll come in, people will come in and try to work the church. That's why Jesus said when Jesus, they, they say, when Jesus fed the 5,000, they said, we're going to make you king. Jesus said, no, nah, I'm going to go. Y'all just want to make me king because I'll fed y'all. And then, don't you remember when John, with the, when they had John for to cut his head off? John told his disciples, go, go down there and see if, if he the real one, the Messiah. When he got that, Jesus said, go tell John what you see. Huh? He said, lame can... Can walk. The dog can talk. Huh? But then he also said, What? The gospel. Uh, he said, the, the poor has heard the gospel. Did you, he didn't say, We feeding the poor. That ain't what he said. What did he say? He said, That the poor has heard the gospel. What did he say? He said, I'm giving them some information that's going to cause them to move them out of poverty into prosperity. Do you hear me? I'm giving them some information that's going to cause them to prosper. Y'all put your hands together. Do you hear me? That's what the kingdom does. We bring them in. We give them information. We feed them a little fish, but we give them a fishing pole. <laughs> we show them how to catch their own fish. Amen. 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 You know, yes. and that's how we do it. Yes. But we need workers to be sent into the field yes. to do what? To witness? Yes. To be a testimony? Yes. To win souls? Yes. To advance God's kingdom, not our kingdom. Yes. It's that's God's right. kingdom. That's right. That's right. So when I say to witness, to give testimony, Watch me now. Testimonies are held in courtroom, right? You call a witness to test to see if the plan of what he's saying is true. A testimony is something you can test to see if it's real. Amen. God needs some people from every walks of life to claim that is a government function, a supernatural kingdom that is, that's functioning from another place in the earth. Uh, and there's a leader in charge. His name is Jesus Amen. Christ. Do you hear? And there's an anointing in the earth. And his folks are filled Amen. with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. And they are in a supernatural, invisible kingdom. And you can test it. And you can receive it in your life. And you can receive the God. Good God, I'm out of healing, deliverance, salvation. You can test this. Amen. We live in a kingdom where you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink. Just, just like my God take care of the bird, he'll take care of you in the kingdom. Do you hear me? And that's the kind of kingdom that we live in. We can make a deposit on what we need. That's right. 
Amen. Watch me now. Second Timothy 3.16 says, For the scripture declares that all scriptures yes. were given by inspiration of God is profitable for what? For reproof, for correction, instruction, and righteousness. God wants us to completely furnish now. He doesn't want us saved and that's all. You shouldn't be saved and frustrated. Right. But you should be saved with the knowledge and the understanding of a little bitty word, sozo. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you should realize that something has taken place in your life. We should have life. It's one thing to say that we have life. It's another thing to have a life that produced the God kind of fruit on a God kind of journey. He didn't save you out of the world when you was out there, out there loud and acting a fool. He bring you into the church and now you sit in here like a ch quiet little church. Mind. No, 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 no. But he has called us to a life of power, a life of self-control, a life of obedience and love. Do you hear me? And that's what he has called us to. And Proverbs 11 and 30 said that he that win souls a while. If you really want to tap in to the wisdom of God, go after souls. Win souls for the kingdom of God. Look, we got to get back to the basics. We got to do what the Lord needs and realize that the Lord has need of us. We got to understand that he needs workers. Amen. He needs us. Isaiah heard who shall go for us and who shall we send? And it's like, how can they call on him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe on him whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except if he's been sent? Amen. These scriptures should motivate us when we hear that the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. The harvest is ripe and you reap where you have not sown. And God, let me tell you something, my friend. It's going to come a day when God, when we start going out, that God going to drop the fruit right in the bucket and the fish going to jump right in the net. If we just would go out, make ourselves available, do you hear me? We're going to see God's kingdom begin to advance, advance, and advance. Y'all put your hands together. Look at this. A need. For workers. Yeah. Now the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Just remember that. Every morning you wake up, I got to go to work for the Lord because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Yeah. I'll go today, Lord. I'll go. When I say, how you doing? I'll give him a handshake. You bless him. And you ain't got to say it because sometimes, you know, that devil be acting up. So you got to get him. All you do is put your hand on him. That's right. That's right. Doing Lord. Get out. <laughs> Jesus, man. But don't say it well, they can hear you now. <laughs> On the job, they might go report you now. You got to be wise and slick. <laughs> you hear me? You can you can you, you can't you gotta watch them now. They'll get you. You got you, hey, you got to be wise. Amen. 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 You got to know. You can't be out there running blind. They'll get you now. Amen. They hate God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They'll put you in a harness nest. You know how to get out of one. I've been in plenty of harness nests. I know how to get out of them though. <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. Oh, let me get let me get going. Let's go get good, Joseph. Because you gotta be careful on the job. Now ain't that fun? They can they can look at anything on the job, say anything. But the minute you say, oh, they ain't talking about Jesus. <laughs> you ain't supposed to do that, man. Hey, get thee behind me, Satan. You don't care about the things of God, you care about the things of man. That's right. That's amen. right. That's praise right. the Lord. That was our praise the Lord. <laughs> I know he don't, that don't like that. No. You thought, I said, praise the Lord. They, they, they be talking, yeah, praise the Lord. They get mad and walk on. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> That's right. Yes, they will. In Ezekiel 47, though, it says that Ezekiel was in the temple of God. And the water was around his ankles and around yeah. his knees and around his waist. It became such a river that you couldn't even cross it. It was impossible for men, women, boys, and girls to master it in swimming. This river blessed everything that it touched. And I believe in the last days, according to John 7, 38, it is the power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the liquid fire Amen. of the Holy Ghost. Do you hear me? From out of your belly shall flow Amen. rivers of living waters. God is turning on the faucet in these last days. And he's bringing us out of the church building into the streets, the jails, the rest homes, the hospitals, do you hear me? Into the lives of people who need salvation, healing, and deliverance. But he needs workers. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. The old preacher in the Baptist church would say, Lord, he get out of his knees. He said, the deacon that is, he get out of his knees and say, Lord, go to the prison. 
Go to the hospitals. Lord, go to God. Say, the Lord, say, hey, I'll go if you go. That's how I'm going to get there. You got to go. Amen. Amen. They go, they tell the Lord, they go, the Lord, I'm going to go. You go. <laughs> you got to go. The only way your, your partner's going to get delivered, you got to go. And you got to love them. In spite of her. Paul said, I become as they are. I don't do what they do, but I sit like they sat, but I don't do what they do. Do you hear me? We got to go. We got to begin to invade some of these places. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. So the kingdom of heaven is yes. like a man who bought a field. Yes. Do you hear me? That's right. And sowed seeds. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Will those seeds that's in the hand of Jesus. Right. In Matthew 13, he talks about how, how the son of man sowed seeds right. among the thorns. The thorns are the evil ones in the world. And God, he's not afraid to throw his people in the bad places and dark places and situations and circumstances. Why? Because he knows that wherever they land, they're going to take over the place and the place ain't going to take over them. Do you hear me? But if you're not willing to go, if you're not willing to go, amen. Now, I only advise you if you use to smoke crack for you to go to the crack house. You stay away from now. You don't send somebody who ain't messing with that stuff. Amen. 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 Now, I go there sometime, but not all the time. And I, I used to get high. I used to say, I was a low-down scum on the earth, backbiting, the whole mother in the center. I was on my way to hell, but God picked me up and turned me around and whoop, here I am today. Amen. You hear me? That's how, hey, I, used to, hey, I used to be out there. I hated everybody. Myself, I hated everybody. Yeah. Jesus Christ was the first story I ever heard, it didn't make no sense. Yeah. But it's the one that changed my life. Oh, I've been to the rehab seven times, went to Jesus once, Amen. and I've been running ever since. Amen. I got saved in 1990. Amen. Started preaching at 95, filled with the Holy Ghost in 98. Amen. I've been on fire ever since I started. Amen. 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 And that's the truth. And I ain't trying to tickle you ears. I'm trying to prick your heart. I'm trying to t let you know what God done for a six foot four hillbilly, he'll do for you. If he can save me, he can save anybody. 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 I got nine different assaults. I got all kind of stuff. God changed me. Amen. Amen. But watch me now. The Lord is trying to motivate us to go out into the city. To go out into our communities and schools and witness to win souls, to bring them to the house of God so they can learn. Give them a shepherd. Bring them so the shepherd can nourish them, can help them. Because I told you, you know the sheep, he's dumb. Mm -hmm. We do some dumb stuff. How many folks have done some dumb stuff? We, we can do some Come dumb on. stuff. Come on. And say, I've done it again. You did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it again. Amen. We need a shepherd. Yes. Yes. We, know we can save ourselves. We wouldn't need Jesus. We must remember that remember there are lost souls out there, just like you and I used to be, before we came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And they need you yeah. to share your faith with them. Yeah. We need to be about our father's business. We got to reach the loss at any cost now. Amen. And nobody's left out. It's time to go to work. There is a need for workers. The harvest is plentiful now. That's right. That's right. And the workers is few. Yeah. Now when I go out to witness and share my faith. You're going to run into some people, some many folks who will tell you they saved. You'll say, how long have you been saved? They say, well, I was baptized. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's, what they're saying. Saying. that's what they're saying. But I don't know nothing about confessing no sin yeah. and confessing Jesus as Lord. Now, Romans 10 and 9 says, thou will confess with the mouth the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised them from the dead. Thou shall be saved. Amen. And then after that, you're going to get baptized. My baptism is an obedience That's for right. what Christ has done for me. I'm saying to God, yes, sir. I'm That's saying to the church, I'm one of y'all. Now, y'all need to love me. I'm saying to the world, bye-bye. And I'm saying to the devil, you can go on to hell where you belong. My baptism is more than an outward display of, of an inward transaction. It's symbolic to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Y'all put your hands together. You got to know this message if you're going to share it. They're going to say, how long you been saved? Well, I was baptized. We take a bath in water, the same water every day. Water, the water don't save you. Jesus do. 
Baptism is not, God don't want no in the closet, closet Christian. Baptism just, I'm just announcing to the world, look, I done changed. I'm a Christian. I want y'all to know who I am. Right. That's right. That's right. Amen. So that's the wrong answer. When somebody asks you, when you were saved, you don't say I was baptized. You say, I got saved in 1990. <laughs> you hear me? September the 3rd, 1990. And I was filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence and talking in tongues. I started talking in 1990. You're supposed to know them. You got to know those days. Amen, but why? Because you know something. That, what, the, what the whole song says, I looked at my hands and they looked new, looked at my feet, they did too. No, that ain't, that ain't, that ain't how it works. Right. Right. You had a scratch on your hand, they still left. Right. Your feet messed up, my, my feet hurt all the time. Right. But something happened on the inside that was new. He that's born of God can do no sin. The man inside of me, it was a, a person came live inside of me that don't agree with no sin. But he that's born of God can't do no sin. He's talking about the real you that's inside of you. So when I do sin, inside I still why? Because the Holy Spirit never agreed with what I was doing. He began to cry. Right. And until when I repent, then he gets back right. Yeah, yeah. He never agreed to that because he can't do any sin. I got somebody else living inside of me. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is living in me now. Yeah. Amen. I'm different from the inside now. Amen. God worked in us before he can work through us, brother. That's right. That's right. In us before he can work through us. Amen. You know, and that religion and all that old natural stuff. Because they don't understand spiritual things. Amen. Not ranking on them now. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So when I go out to share my faith, though, I run into people, say, are you born again? Or are you saved? They'll say, I'm saved, but I don't know nothing about being born again. There's a confusion out here. Yes, there because people have gone out ready with a whack message right. before us. Right. Zeal with no knowledge. That's dangerous. Yes, people going out with zeal and no knowledge. You got to know what this word say. That's right. go, go, go to uh, Romans 10. The first three verses. Somebody read that. Read that for me in the King James. Got a King James. Somebody stand and read that. Read uh, Romans 10 for me. What Paul is talking. Yes. Okay. Romans chapter 10. Verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be no, saved. No, hold up now. They were the Jews. God showed the people. But Paul is praying what? Paul praying that they... Be, that, that they are saved. Yeah. So I'll let you know they, they, were, they had a form of God, but they were denying all the power of right. So you got to understand them because this is what we're dealing with. Yes. In this area, we got people, amen, who thinking that they're saved, amen. and a lot of them are just not. That's That's right. Right. That's amen? Right. They have given their right hand of fellowship, but they never given their heart to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Never confess Jesus the Lord. They, just, they, they get on man's road, but they ain't never got on God's road. Amen. Amen. That's right. The Jews were going to going to them synagogues day in and day out. Amen. But here you see Paul said, What my heart desire and pray that Israel might be saved. What he said, they found a record. What? Mm -hmm. And have a zeal of God, but not what? Now you read it. All right, let you read it. <laughs> For they're being ignorant of God rights. You see that? We got some ignorant folks. <laughs> it's some ignorant folks, boy. You hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. What Paul say? They've been ignorant too. Look like it goes way back then. What Paul say? Ignorantly. What? Ignorant. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Now you see that that's what religion does. Yeah. They ignorant of God's righteousness, so they go about and they establish their own rightness. Right. 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 What, what else? Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You hear me? There's a righteousness that people abide by that's not of God. Just like Paul was talking to, talking to the to the people on Mars Hill on Arrow Pagans. They were ignorant of the worship of God. Paul said, I want to declare you. I want to declare you to the unknown God. They had a sign out in the front. <laughs> yeah. That's right. they, had a, they had a sign out in the front say to the unknown God. That's right. Paul said, I, I saw your sign out there <laughs> to the unknown God who you've been ignorantly worship. He has risen. <laughs> 
Yeah. Ignorant because they don't have a true relationship based on the word of God. Nobody can come to the Father except through the Son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the door to the sheepfold. He that has the Father and the Son has life. We got to know what we're talking about. You got to know. You should know Romans 10. That, you should know whole Romans 10. You should know it. Read it. Read it, read it till you get it in your spirit and get it out your mind. My heart desire and prayer that Israel might be saved. That they bear a record and have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being the ignorant of God's righteousness, going about trying to stamp their own right, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for them that believe it. For Moses destroyed the righteousness of the law, for they that do those things must live bound. But the rights of the faith will we speak on the wise. Say not in your own heart. Who shall ascend unto heaven? That's to bring him down. Who shall ascend into the deep? That's to bring him up from the dead. But what does the word say? The word is near thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That's the word of faith that we preach. If thou confess with the mouth the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. With the heart. Man believing on the righteous. With the mouth, confession is made on the salvation. Whosoever shall call out on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It ain't got nothing to do with us. But it's got everything to do with Jesus. And Jesus will use you when you go out there to bring folks into this same knowledge, brother, that Hindu can't save them. Bula can't save them. Islam can't save them. The only name that a man can be saved upon is Christ Jesus. Somebody shout glory and give God some praise. That's it. But he goes on to say, but how can they call on him whom they have not believed? How can they believe on him whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach himself if being sent? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad time and a good thing. But Paul, but Isaiah said, who shall believe the report? Everybody ain't going to believe the report. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He said, all day long, I stretch out my hand to a gang slaying and disobedient people. That's Romans 10. You should know that. You should get it in you. Amen. You should get that in you. Amen. You got to know this message yeah. if you're going to share it. Yeah. Right. When you go out there, because you're going to run into some real, mean, religious people, yeah. and you got to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because you can't just have this super relationship with Jehovah God and not have a fresh, dynamic relationship with the Son of God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's up to us Amen. who have this revelation of the kingdom of God, the finished work of Calvary. Well, not what you have done, but what he has done for us on the skull, on Gal Gold. Talk. Do you hear me? The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's the Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. He's the propitiation for our sins and transgression. He's the atonement for our sins, the shedding of his blood once of all on the mercy seat so we can all be saved. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. You got to know this message. Watch me now. Jesus Christ is the only one. I'm trying to get through. He's the only one who can assuage the justice of God. The only one that can satisfy God. Do you hear me? He sprinkled his blood once and for all, like I said, on the mercy seat so we can all be saved. Jesus Christ was alone, was buried, buried, and rolled with all power in heaven and earth. And Jesus makes salvation possible. You're going to have to know this message. And when you go out there, you got to know it and you got to believe it. Y'all put your hands together. I'm moving on. You got to know this message. Right. Amen. And don't you know, if you really know this message, when you go out, when you, you can't be scared now. No. You can't be scared. And you got just, just, just pray and God going to lead you. And this is usually what I do. I just strike up a conversation. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in uh, Kroger's. I can be in Kroger's anywhere. I, you know, hey, it, it, I am what I am. You might not do it like me, but I'm telling you how I do it. I'm in Kroger's anyway. H-E-B. I run into somebody. I didn't look. I said, how you doing? Little lady can't get, get her, trying to reach the top shelf. I go, help her. How you doing? I'm doing, I'm just, I'm not feeling too good. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I talked to her a little bit. Do you mind if I pray for you? Do you know Jesus? Uh, yes, but I'll let you pray for me. <laughs> I pray right there. Amen. Amen. Dude was stocking in H-E-B. Yeah. He said, I've been to church. I played in, I've been playing in the drums in the church for Years, I ain't even know who Jesus is. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I started witnessing to him right here, preaching to him. Next thing I know, I looked around. It's about seven, eight folks around there looking and listening. 
I said, oh man, that's nice. Hey, do you know him? 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 I began to just touch everybody. We've been getting to talk. And most of them was believing. They started praising right there. And you know it. Somebody went to run into the front trying to find the manager. They haven't church back down. <laughs> they haven't church back down. So show Leah. Yeah. Amen. Show Leah. Sure so when I go to when I go to H E B, they say, There you go. <laughs> no, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Cause they know I'm like, I'm gonna pray, I'm gonna witness. Amen. But if you do that, you can get. Hey, you got to be bold enough. You can't be like right. Peter now when he before he got filled. That's right. That's right. Pastor Bell always filling folks. They always got all this worship. You can get baptized in the spirit. When she playing at that worship, you can get saturated, get baptized, and get you some power. Amen. 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 Don't you remember when Peter before he, he Peter was like, uh, Jesus said, "You know what? He said, gonna crucify me. I'm gonna die." But I'm gonna raise, but they're gonna, I'm gonna raise again. Be, I'm gonna rise on the third day. But they're gonna, uh, the Romans gonna crucify. He said, No, 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 Peter. Yeah. I mean, Peter said, No, 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 Lord, be it not so. He said, Get thee behind me. Say. But then Peter goes on and said, What? Well, Lord, I, I die for you. I go to jail for you. He said, No, 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 Peter. Before the cock goes dry, you gonna deny me. Oh, the devil is a liar. I'm gonna be right back for I'm gonna be with you. Everybody else might roll on you. Got around that fire. <laughs> they know when you've been with Jesus now. Yeah. When you go back to the world, they know, they know when you've been with Jesus. Right. So you look just like one of them. <laughs> I know not that man. <laughs> I say, yeah, 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 yeah. You dress just like him. I know not that man. Look, girl, okay. You yeah, why not? <laughs> say, what the cussing? <laughs> what the cussing? But then after you see, when Jesus died and had rose, he said, go tell Peter, right? Huh? Yeah. But before then, he already told him what? He said, look, when he, when he was telling him about you going to deny him, he said, but I done prayed for you that your faith failed, you're not. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. right. That, you, that when you come out of this, you can strain your brother, brother. Yeah. He said, because you need, I'm not going to pray that the devil stay away from you. I'm going to let him get you. He's going to sift you as wheat. Because when he gets through with you, ain't going to be nothing left but that revelation that you had on the world of something real pit Philippi. Right. <laughs> that I'm the Messiah. That's right. Amen. And so you see now, after that, Peter, after that fall, now Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts 1, you see him what? Now, they getting filled. Yes. He up there getting filled with 120. Because you see, he's getting filled up now. Now he got some power. Now he ain't scared no more. You saw back there, he was scared. Wrong around the wrong fire. That's See, right. that's what happened. When you get around the wrong fire, you ain't got no power. You're going to deny Jesus every time. That's right. Hey. That's right. When you go out in the world, if you ain't got no power, you're going to stand by. That's right. See where the wind blowing. <laughs> we ain't going to know what you stand for. That's right. You stand by, you're going to be whatever everybody else is being. That's right. That's right. You ain't no thermostat. That's what we're supposed to be as a thermostat. You're a temperature game. Right. You're going, whatever they're doing, that's what you do. Mm -mm, that's sad. you supposed to, well, wherever there's darkness, you're supposed to go in there. Turn on the light. Right. <laughs> the light. Right. We're supposed to change things. Yes. But when you ain't got no power, you blend me in. <laughs> Stand by. We don't know what you, what you believe today. We don't know where, who you with today. That's right. But we see Peter now. He's filled. That's why you need to come to church every Sunday and get and, and, and sat, get saturated in that spirit and, get, and begin to go along and come and encourage one another and hear the word of God. Why? So when you go out there, you're going to have some power like Peter did. When Peter stood before 3,000, he said, that same Jesus in Acts 2, right in that verse, or what, 30 something. The same Jesus that you have crucified. He said that God made him Lord of all. When they heard that, the Bible said they were pricked in their heart. Peter said, men and brethren, they said, men and brothers, they said, what shall we do? Peter said, repent Amen. for the real mission of your sins. Yes. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, this is a promise on the you and to your children. The men that fall off, the men of the Lord, thy God shall call. People are living in a living hell out there. The only thing that get them out of hell in the heaven is the same word that was preached in the word of God. Amen. How Jesus Christ came, lived, died, and rose again with all power in his hand. We got to know this message and they'll come running. Amen. They'll come running. But when you go out now, you can't get offended 
You can't get offended now. You hear me when you go out to share your faith? Mm -mm. See, when I go out to share my faith to witness, to win souls, I go out there sometimes the Baptist called me charismatic. The charismatic called me Baptist. The Pentecostal said I need to get saved and the Church of Christ is trying to send me to hell. And all I'm out there doing is trying to win souls. But I am what I am by the grace of God. I don't let nobody make me feel like I ain't got no God about me. I know too much about him to doubt him. I just keep on doing what I'm doing. God said, go I tell you to go do what I tell you to do and I'm going to back you up. Y'all put your hands together. Do you hear me? That's it. You can't get offended when people say stuff. Right. I hear it and don't hear it. That's right. I throw them the deuce. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I ain't got time for no foolishness. Amen. Or they'll come ask you, I got a, I need, I, 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 I got a question for you. Some they, some they didn't heard somewhere. They trying to cross you up. That's right. That's right. They got a question for me. I said, yeah, I got one for you first. I got a scripture for you. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter thirteen verse five. Yes. And examine yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to see if you're in the faith. That, I give them that scripture. They burn off. I'll tell them, they don't know what it is, so you got to tell them. Because right. <laughs> what they're going to try to do. So you don't even want don't get caught up in all of that. Amen. Don't get caught up in, in, in that. Because right. it's a trap. Yes. That's right. Amen. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Asking you all kind of questions about Noah and all this crazy no. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that they done figured out, that they done twisted up, trying to give it to you. <laughs> you hear me? The devil's a waffling lie. A waffling lie. You know what a waffling lie is? Yeah. I mean, he put some truth with it. That's right. And then he twisted it. He waff make it. That's a waffling lie. Right. The devil don't tell a straight lie. He puts. He waffle it. He make it crooked a little bit. Yes, that's, that's right. right. That's right. He tried to get you off chasing rabbits. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Amen. I just tell us a hold up for a minute. I'll be right back. <laughs> burn you know. Burn off. Leave him right there. That's right. Because there's somebody over there you, yeah. that you're supposed to reach. He's just a distraction. That's right. Amen. Do you hear me? You got to be able to see. That's the truth of it. Amen. That's right. But when I go out to witness and share my faith, you're going to find out there's a lot of backsliders. That's my point now. I'm going to be yeah. through. You're going to find out there's a lot of backsliders you're going to run into. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Who going to claim they already know what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> yes. Backsliders. And so many people will backslide. If anybody backslides, look in the verbs of backslide, you got to tell them, don't pack up, don't leave. You're going to be all right after a while. We may endure the night, but joy coming oh, tomorrow. Yes. Joy, gonna, God's going to take care of you. Yes. Don't leave. Don't leave. So many people leave because yes. they're ignorant of Satan's devices. That's right. They don't understand it's a process. Yes. Yes. The devil is going to come. I know when the preacher said, come on to the Lord, everything going to be all right. Yeah, in the end. Yeah. But when you come to the Lord, them, them folks you thought they like you, you're gonna find out some of them don't like you. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you're gonna find out them friends that say they was for you, you're gonna find out that they wasn't. Amen. Amen. That's right. You gotta go through a season. That's right. Amen. Or right. suffer sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Before you get to a season of blessing. You got to go through. Come on. Yeah. If you get an orange or apple, you know, when it's on that tree, the sun hit it. The rain hit it. Right. The wind blow hard, right. hot, cold. Right. It has to go through the season. We're, uh, we're the same way. Yes. This is what you got to do. You got to learn how to dress for whatever season that you're in. Amen. 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 Come on. That's good. That's good. Yeah. If it's 20 below, you can't put on your days of dudes now. That's right. <laughs> you can't be out there in your days of dudes. Shouldn't be in them know how. Oh, what your little sister had me up song. Huh? We had hand me downs in the world. Yeah, that's right. When I was growing up, they had hand me down. Yeah. When my when your clothes get too little, yeah. you give them to the little brother, the little sister. They got hand me up now. Right. When the little sister clothes get too big, she give them to the big sister, and the big sister put them on. <laughs> Told her they messed up now. That's, that's true. Hand me up. That's right. That's right. You got to dress for your season. Come on. Come on. Amen. That's right. In the wintertime, you put a coat on, you put clothes on. on. In the summertime, you dress light. That's right. If you dress what, in the season that you're in, you'll be just fine. That's Tell somebody you'll be just fine. Be just fine. Dress right. Everything is a process. Don't get upset. God's going to take care of you just like he took care of the children of Israel. Amen. He fed a manna every day. Yeah. 
And they didn't like it. <laughs> Every day, brother, he gave them manna. You know what manna mean? What is this? In fact, we to say, what is this stuff? <laughs> Why we always got to eat this? Why I always got to go like this and this got to go like that? What is this? God said, it's my provision. Come on. Come on. And you need to be grateful and thankful for the little bit that you got. I'm trying to get you to be thankful just like I took care of you yesterday. I'm taking care of you today. And you got to learn how to be thankful for what you got and be thankful with the little bit that you got. People in America crying about they hungry and got a loaf of bread. (laughs) (laughs) On top of the refrigerator. Even crying and got a sack of potatoes. God told me one time when I uh, I, I was in East Texas somewhere, talking about Man, you preach like that, the folks ain't gonna kill. They gonna starve. Y'all say they can't starve me. I eat everything they eat in the food bank. I'm a hillbilly. <laughs> Rice and potatoes and beans. Yes, sir. I eat chicken, man. I can't help it. Yes, <laughs> I love chicken. I'm a hillbilly. They can't, how you gonna starve me when I can go get my food from the food bank? <laughs> how you gonna starve me? I'm gonna eat it till the day I die. Amen. Amen. Got to bag up off that salt though, but hey, I am what I am. Wow. You got to be thankful. That's right. That's right. I went to jail one time. I had to burn every breeze that was, burn every breeze in my family. I didn't have no breeze to walk across. And I was in, that was a good place for me to be. Because I started looking up there. They say you're real. <laughs> if you're real, <laughs> help me. And I said, help me. He fed me when I was hungry. Clothed me when I was naked. Protected me when the enemies came to me. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? God will prove you. He'll test you. God will let you get hungry so he can feed you. He'll let you get thirsty so he can give you a drink. He'll let your enemies surround you so when you call out on him, he'll deliver you and you'll know it was him all the while. You say, didn't nobody give you nothing. That's the way God set it up. Don't nobody talk to you. That's the way God set it up. Because you need to talk to God and quit talking to them other folks. That's why I ain't nobody talking to you. Because God said, I'm trying to get you to talk to me. That's right. That's right. I told my son, he in jail now. He said, Pastor, I get up at five every morning. I said, that's good. He said, when I get out, I said, you got to keep doing it. He said, well, I said, well, you got to keep doing it. Once you become a habit, God will let you out. Because right now, if he let you out, you ain't going to get up at five no more and do that. I know you. But you get now, son. You can do it. He said, yes, sir. I said, read the proverb of the day. It keeps the devil away. (laughs) I sent him some deliverance and had him say deliverance. I bind the spirit of drugs and all its root fruits. And spirits and leaks come out of my personality, come out of my being, come out of my, come out of my will in Jesus' name. I tell you, you got this. I want you saying, I want you to spend twenty minutes every morning Amen. doing your delivering because it's spiritual. Yeah. It's gonna take the taste yeah, yeah, yeah. out of his tongue, out of his personality. Yeah, come on. That's how you you hear me. You got to drive. You say, what's that? Mark sixteen seventeen. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall drive out demons and speak with a new tongue. That's kingdom. It ain't see, yeah. see, a lot of people are scared of that because they yeah. earthly. Yeah. Religion don't want none of that. That's all kingdom. Kingdom. That's deliverance. That's in the kingdom. Healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, and wonders. Amen. I said, keep your attitude right, son. He called me complacent. Hey, man, kill that. I said, if you want a miracle, you got to create an environment around you where the God can work. He can't work right there. Ain't nobody going to work in that, in that environment that you got right now but the devil. That's right. Your environment is either going to draw God or it's going to draw the devil. That's right. That's right. I don't let nobody steal my peace. Amen. Amen. Nobody. Amen. I'm trying to keep my environment right. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. You want a miracle? Can your environment produce one? The environment you got in your house, what you got coming through the TV, what you what you listening to every day, you got to, what you what your son doing? He back there smoking, drinking, cussing, watching stuff he ain't got no business. Got a lightning rod in your house, where the devil just shooting through that room corner all in the house. He nothing but a they ain't nothing but a lightning rod, demon rod. Let's put it like that, demon rod. Amen. 
Sometimes you got to go with this door. I lock this door. Right. Locking this door. This is my house. What you doing? Give me that backpack. Let me look in there and see what you got. You invade my privacy. You ain't got no privacy up in here. <laughs> I'll make a deal with you. When you get grown and get your own place, then. <laughs> because we're trying to do what? We're trying to keep everything right so God can work. We, you hear me? When that high, when you start, when you, when you and your spouse start bumping heads, oh, you can check for the demon rod. It's somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere around now. He can got in now. Amen. Amen. Because he comes to steal the peace. But anyway, let's keep moving. Well, I'm almost yeah, through. So can you get ready to play me some soft, yeah. good morning worship song with the instrumental for me? Yeah. Thank you. So you got to know how it feels for God to wrap you up yeah. when nobody else will. Pick you up out of the muck and the mire. Rock you to sleep when nobody else will. Feed you when you're hungry. Clothe you when you're naked. God is well able to take care of you. And it doesn't matter how many serpents, amen, that are in the wilderness. It don't matter how many bitter waters or bitter tears you have to shed. And you tell these to the members that's not here because some of them are going through, they're just caught up, struggling with bills, and struggling with stain. They've been drinking bitter waters and shedding bitter tears. You say, there's nobody, nobody to help me. Nobody to hold me. Bills seem to be too great. I don't know who is for me and who's against me. I can't see the she bear or the lion. Let the she bear and the lion go. God is well able to take care of you. All you got to do is keep your eyes on him. I know what I'm talking about. Yes. A year and a half, one of our daughters in our early 20s committed suicide. And that was the roughest time, not just on me, but on my whole family, my children, my grandchildren. They had never saw me so distraught, weeping. They never saw me like that. And, and, by, and when I was down, everybody was down. And the devil was trying so hard. So y'all to curse God and die. And I said what Job said. I said, God knows the way that I'll take. When he's tried me, I'm going to come forth as pure gold. Yet that he slayed me, I'm going to still trust in him. I'm going to wait right here. Do you hear me? Until my change come. Because I know that my Redeemer living that will come upon me in a lot of days. Even when the skin worms eat my flesh, I'll still be able to see it. Not with your eyes, but with my own. Nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I said, well, I don't know how you're going to do it. I ain't asking God to remove the hurt and the pain. I'm just asking him to give me strength to minister in the midst of it. And I've been moving on, me and my wife. Still doing what God has called me to do. So many people have been in the same situation that I've been in, and they leave God. They backslide. And people usually backslide because of trouble, because of death in the family, because of some financial difficulties. And they say, God don't care nothing about me. It's actually just being ignorant of Satan devices. Read the last scripture, we're going to be gone. Jeremiah 13, I mean, Jeremiah 3, verse 12 through 15. Read that. Read that for me. In the King James, somebody for me. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 12 through 15. You know, a backslider is somebody who becomes unfaithful of God, who falls away from the things of God. And when you go out, you're going to find so many people at one time or another, brother, because that's been in the house of God. 
but trouble has driven them away and they all fell away go ahead and read it what do you read? you got it you got it in King James I got it if you don't you have King James read it go and proclaim these words did you hear that who's he talking about he's talking about us now those of us who are, who are solidified in the body of Christ, in the kingdom, who's solid, he's calling us to go what? Proclaim these words towards the north and say, Return thou, backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord. I will not keep anger forever. Uh, keep going. Brother Tipsy, read that one more. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the main thing now, too. And I will keep you pastors according to my... I'll give you. I will give you pastors according to my own heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. You hear that? Yeah. We're to proclaim to the backslide that God is married to them. They say, come, no matter where you used to be, whatever, I know they hurt you in that church. But come to the church on fire. We got a pastor after God's own heart that'll feed you knowledge, that's going to help you, that's going to get you back on track. That's good news to a backslider when you go out. God is married to the backslider. You got to let them know that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. You got to let them know that God demonstrated his love for them. Yet while we were all sinners, Christ died for us. You got to let them know that God gave his son and his son gave his life. And there's no greater love than this, than a man that'll lay down his life for his friend. God loves you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. So when you run into the backslider, and I'm telling you, you will, in this city, in this Brazos Valley, you have to share your faith and remind them that God is married to the backslider. Hosea 14 and 4 says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. God is the husband to the backslider. And you have to let them know that he'll send somebody just like Peter who wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. But then he get a revelation that he got the priest to all men, women, boys, and girls, no matter what color, where they come from, or what they come out of. And what man has rejected, God has already accepted. The world, what the world calls nothing, God says, that's something. God said, don't you call unclean what I have called clean. I haven't just come to save you. I come to save the whole wide world. Y'all put your hands together. Do you hear me? There's a need for workers. There's a need for workers. And you know what? We're going to bind the spirit of fear real quick as pastor come. Y'all stand to your feet. Just repeat after me. Just say, I bind the spirit of fear with all its roots, with all its fruits, with all its links. I command them, spirit of fear, you come out of me in Jesus' name. I'm speaking to you. Come out now in Jesus' name. The life of the spirit of Christ is set me free from the law of sin and death. Spirit of fear, you have no place in my life. Put your hands together. Come on now. Need for workers now. Son, move this. Jerry. Oh, you're very 
the truth today. Glory to God. There's a soul winner anointing in this brother. Amen. You say, Pastor Darrell, I, I want to be a soul winner. I want, I want that anointing to flow in me. And that boldness. Then come up here right now. Amen. Come up here. Come on, come on this day. That's it. Just come on up here. Glory to God. Come on up here. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I want to be a greater soul winner. Come on up. This altar is open. This altar is open. Glory to God. He that wins his souls is wise. Just recognize, God, I, I need, I need, I need this kind of anointing. Still open. Just come on up. Just come on up. That's it. Just come on up. Just come on up. They're coming. Come on up here. Line up across here. Come on, over here. Over here. Come on. That's it. They're coming. They're coming. Come on up here. Justin, Facebook Live, is it going still? Is the Facebook still going? Let it go. First, I want you to turn to me. Pray for me because I, I want to be a greater soul. Amen. We're soul winners. We're winners. We're winners. Father, right now in Jesus' name, an importation of your spirit, Father, transfer of spirit in Jesus' name. Loose, loose your anointing, Lord. Shema kasata, shena baka, ima roko yatani. In Jesus' name, in Jesus, I'm just gonna just touch you. In Jesus' name. We already popped up. We're going to touch you anyway. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Oh, yeah, Lord, I wash it to you. In my robe, oh, yeah, I tell you. She in my back, I said. Just by faith, just pick, just lift your hands and say, I receive it, Lord. I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and when you go out, not tomorrow, the day, you just say, Lord, what I need to say, do it, who shall go for us, who shall we sing? Say, I'll go, Lord. I'm going. 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 Turn to the Facebook audience. Release your voice. Shema. If you're out there, if you're out there now, and you need power to go and witness, to be a testimony, for he that wins souls is wise, just raise your hand. And just I receive right now the anointing right now, right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the witness, the soul win, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Y'all yeah. put your hands together. Come on now. Yeah. Rebecca, Rebecca is a soul winner. I want you to lay hands on her for a greater soul. Yeah, she's known it already. She's known it. Yeah, she is. She's a known it. Thank you, Thank you. Lord. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Now, those, so yeah. Those listening to my Facebook who don't know Jesus, just just leave them. Just leave if them. you don't know Jesus, if your past has been dogging you, 
and you're tired of the same old thing over and over again. And you have no, now we're not even talking about you joining the church. We're talking about you giving your heart to Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can stand or wherever you're at, you can just repeat after me. Say, oh, Heavenly Father, oh, Heavenly Father. I'm, a sinner, I'm a sinner, but I believe, but I believe that, Jesus Christ that Jesus Christ died for my sin, died for my sin on, the cross. on the cross. And I receive him, I receive him into him. my heart. My heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. For saving me. And if I die right now, I'm coming to be with you. I'm to be with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. For saving me. Y'all, put your hands together. Come on now. If you've done that, if you've done that, that's the most important thing that you can ever do in life. The only thing that you can take out of this world is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. Do you? Yeah. Hallelujah. We say goodbye to you, Facebook. Goodbye. Love y'all.